A little about me. I'm currently 22 and this happened when I was 10. I had a cell phone at the time, but only because my parents travel for their work. So I stayed with my grandparents while my parents were on the road. My dad was working a job in Austin, but my mom was home with me. I had a break going on in school, spring break. So my mom and I decided to fly down to Austin to see him. My mom is a smoker and me being 10, she didn't want me in the cigar room in the airport, which was basically a glass box full of smoke. So we leave our gate and head down that way. Thankfully, there's a bookstore maybe 10 feet from the cigar room, which also has mostly glass windows. So my mom sends me to the bookstore and sits close to the door of the cigar room so she can see me. Before we parted ways, my mom told me to send her a text message saying, I really want this book. If I got any bad vibes from anyone, well, I am a reader, so I think I'll look for a while until my mom is ready to get me. There probably won't be any issue. After about five minutes of being in this bookstore, I notice a guy walk in. I really only remember his gray suit and black shoes. I notice his shoes come over by where I am, the thriller section. So I move away to another section where he promptly follows me again. I assumed it was just coincidence since I was still looking at more mature books and I move over a few feet to another section where they have books on racks in the middle of the floor rather than on shelves in the wall. The guy moves over to the same rack I'm at but the other side. My freakometer was going off like crazy which is rarely wrong. So I do one last thing to test my theory of this guy and I walk over to the little kid section like hungry caterpillar type books and the guy follows me again. I'm freaking out so I go back to the thriller section which is closest to the checkout desk pick up a random book and text my mom. I really want this book. Not two seconds later, I smell my mom's perfume and hear her say, Oh, good, you found something. We promptly pay and leave. Once we were away from the store, I told my mom what happened and she told me she had seen the guy follow me across the store twice and immediately walked over because her freakometer was also off the charts. She hadn't even gotten my message because she was already walking over. Before we go back to our gate, we stop at the ladies room and I noticed the bookstore guy coming down that hall and silently pointed out to my mom, who went on high alert. After the ladies room, we head to our gate where we see the bookstore guy sitting two seats down from our luggage. So my mom sat down next to the plane entrance thing and grabbed our stuff. After we board our plane, the guy is only a couple rows away from us. We can't really move because, well, it's a plane. Finally, we have a layover midway between Nashville our first airport in Austin. I didn't notice the rest of this, but my mom did. The guy got off right behind us and followed us to our next gate. My mom was just pissed at this point and ready to throw down with this guy, but won't because I'm with her. We verify where our gate is and our next plane's ETA and take off to the smoking area, another glass box filled with smoke, where she brought me in with her and smoked the fastest cigarette ever. Apparently, the guy had followed us across the airport to the cigar room and just stood outside waiting. We stopped in a gift shop so I could get my dad a gift and grab a drink, and he followed us there too. Finally, my mom has had more than enough but isn't going to confront him personally because he hasn't done anything technically or engaged us in a very suspicious way yet. So we go back to our gate where my mom tells the lady by the plane entrance what's been going on since Nashville, and she called security. These two huge security guards come down to our gate and start talking to my mom, who says very loudly and pointing. That man has been following us since we arrived at the airport in Nashville. He's making us very uncomfortable. After telling them the full story and hearing my mom being loud and seeing her pointing directly at him, the bookstore guy takes off running. So security called for backup and followed him. And like two minutes later, we boarded our plane for Austin without the creepy guy. A little bit of backstory beforehand. My parents are divorced and I live primarily in Australia but travel back to see my father, his family and my extended family in the UK every chance I can spare. This story revolves around one of these visits. At the time of the visit I was 13 years old and due to scheduling conflicts I would be traveling alone without my other sibling. This airport had an assistance program for minors. That program includes an identifying tag, escorts throughout the airport, help with check-in and priority boarding, etc. I was boarded first. My chaperone said goodbye and handed me off to the flight attendants. So far, so good. 
nothing of any real significance happened for the first few hours of the flight, but I couldn't help but feel a little uneasy. I kept feeling this sensation like someone was watching me, but every time I glanced around, I couldn't see the source. I chalked it up to being a little nervous about flying alone, and I tried to watch the movies calm myself down. The next significant event was when I got up to go pee. Now something caught my eye that hadn't before. There was a man about four rows back in the middle aisle seat who was staring at me. He wasn't making much attempt to hide the fact that he was looking at me, and out of shyness I just looked down and broke our stare and tried to ignore him. As I walked by, I felt almost like he was gesturing me to look at him, as if he wanted to ask me a question. In that moment, I made the decision to ignore him and pretend I hadn't seen him gesture to me. My mother has always been very safety conscious, and I credit her with giving me a healthy suspicion of strangers. She had made it very clear that while I was traveling alone, I didn't have to answer to any other adults but my chaperones, and that if someone tried to talk to me or make me do something for them, I had permission to ignore them or report them to the airport staff, so that's what I did. I walked past him, went to the bathroom, and walked back to my seat with my head down. I can't verify whether or not he kept trying to get my attention because I was a little freaked out to look back. All I can say is that you're being watched senses kept on tingling as the flight went on. But these bad feelings all came to a head during the sleeping hours of the flight. For those who haven't traveled international long hauls, the sleeping hours are for people to sleep by simulating nighttime in the plane. This means no trolley service, dimmed lights, and all the airline screens are shut off. I was very groggy and sleep deprived at the time. I probably should have tried to get some rest, but I couldn't get comfortable and I was just trying to ride out my time watching movies. This is when he approached me. He put a hand on my shoulder and squeezed. Then he said something that I didn't hear with my headphones on. I removed them and turned to give him my groggy but full attention. Me. Sorry? Man. Will you come to the back of the plane with me, please? Me. Utterly confused by this question. Have I done something? Man. No. I would just like you to come to the back of the plane with me. Then he crouched down to be at eye level with me. Me. Glancing back to the end of the plane, which is dark, behind a curtain, and the only bathroom is vacant. Uh... Man. I have money. And he pulls out a wallet and shows me a wad of cash, if you'd like some. I just want to talk to you at the back of the plane. It'll just be for a moment. I'm very confused as what to do when this is happening. Looking back, I remember feeling annoyed, less afraid of danger and more irritated at being asked to stop watching a movie and do something. Due to my tired state, it wasn't connecting that I might be in danger. I was just being asked to talk to this guy about something. I wonder if he might have convinced me with a little more prodding, but luckily he didn't get any further. A woman behind me, who I realized later was listening in for the entire conversation, pulled down her eye mask, leaned over between the seat gap, and said, She isn't interested. You need to return to your seat right now, or I'll call the flight attendant. I've never seen a man move so fast. He tucked his wallet away and scurried back to his seat, slid on his eye mask and rotated away from us so he wouldn't see his face. She turns her attention to me and says, If he comes back over, you wake me up or call for the flight attendant. If you need to use the bathroom, use the one in the center of the plane. It's well lit. And she reaches through and rests a hand on my shoulder. I give a thank you and she leans back in her seat but keeps her eye mask off, shooting looks in the man's direction. Near the last few hours of the flight, I didn't feel uneasy or like I was being watched anymore. The woman, who was traveling with her two kids, keeps leaning in and asking me questions about where I'm going, who is picking me up from the airport, etc. When she discovers that I'm meeting my extended family at the terminal, her face clears and she offers to walk out with me to the baggage claim. We land and get off the plane, and when I saw my father in the arrivals lounge, I wave for a fond goodbye, say thank you, and walk off. As for the guy, I have no idea what happened. The encounter was so bizarre and short that I might have just discarded it from my memory immediately. Looking back though, I always feel apprehension and dread at what his intentions were. I have some theories, but I'm glad I didn't get put in a position to find out. To the woman who saved me, you're my hero and I only wish I could thank you properly for looking out for me. This is a story about something that happened to me and my grandma when I was 6 or 7, so 2001 or 2002. 
For context, I'm a girl, and at the time I was living in a city that was somewhat small, but it's politically important, so it always had an airport. My aunt was flying in, and as she had lived in another town for ages, we were very excited to welcome her at the airport. We made our way to the gate people came out of after picking up their luggage. Not sure if this has a name in English, but to describe it, it had sliding glass doors so you could see people inside getting the luggage. I remember being very chatty while waiting, and at some point, my grandma grabbed my hand real hard and gave me a look that just said, shut up. I thought I had said something wrong, but after a while, I realized she was trying to listen to the people that were standing right next to us. They seemed to be fighting a lot. Also, my grandma has always been very gossipy. I looked over at them and they were an old man and a very pregnant woman and were just discussing something which didn't really interest seven-year-old me, so I ignored it. And now some things get fuzzy in my memory, so I will tell you what I remember and then what my grandma told me happened. I remember hearing the old man scream something like, there he is, I'm going to get him, over and over until this man comes out of the sliding glass doors. And I just remember that people all around started screaming and my grandma threw me into the ground and laid on top of me. I heard noises like fireworks and screams and I felt suffocated both by my grandma and some sort of weird smell and also by how hot it was under her. So I was feeling really bad and I started screaming. At one point I tried to push her off of me and for a moment I raised my head and saw a lot of red close to my face on the ground and lots of people laying down with hands on their heads. Everything smelled bad and hot. I don't really know how else to describe it. At this point, my grandma pushed my head quite forcefully to the ground and whispered, Stop and play dead. Now. In the most serious voice I had ever heard from her. I didn't understand what was happening before that, and I was quite angry with my grandma for being forceful. But as she said this, I began to understand that this was serious, and I got quiet really fast, while trying not to cry. At some point, she got off of me and all, but carried me to stay behind a large pillar. I remember feeling very shaky in the legs, as if I had no strength, but there was a police officer there who told me everything was going to be alright. There were other people there who looked scared too, and we just sat down in silence for some time, while we heard police talking and an old man crying and screaming very loudly. Then it got really quiet, and I remember being taken to a room where I had to say what I knew to more officers for a while, until we could go. When they took me there, an officer used his hand to cover my eyes on the way, and I remember feeling just angry and tired of being handled around. I tried to take his hands off and I saw for just a moment the pregnant woman lying on her back. This image is forever in my head since that day. Now for the details my grandma told me later on. She told me what happened only a few years back. At the time this took place, she just explained to me that a very bad man did bad stuff but he was arrested and I shouldn't worry. But as she explained recently what happened was that the old man was the woman's father and apparently, she was very young and got pregnant by this guy, I'll call him Dick, who then just ran away and abandoned her. He was coming back because she had recently been in touch and had reconsidered about being a dad, except when her father found out about us, he was very angry and decided to take revenge on Dick for leaving in the first place. My grandma said she learned this on the news later, but in the airport, she heard the father talking about how Dick ruined her life and how he had to pay and how he wasn't going to let anyone treat her like that and he kept telling him that she loved the guy, that he had come around to not do anything. I should add maybe that abortions aren't legal here, and that the only way to get one is either paying a lot of cash to someone to do it illegally, or getting sketchy drugs from sketchy people, which can result in a lot of other bad stuff. And as you may have guessed, her father had a gun, and as Dick came out of the glass door with his luggage, he whipped it out. And that's when people started screaming, and my grandma throws me on the ground, and also when everyone gets on the ground too. Except, he didn't just kill that guy. Apparently, he was too emotional or he had never shot a gun before. Or both. Because he couldn't aim right and he hurt some other people too, who took grazing bullets or got shot in non-fatal places. While this is happening, the woman keeps screaming that she loves her baby daddy and when her dad managed to aim right, she threw herself in the way. Both her, Dick, and the baby got killed instantly. My grandma said that this happened really fast and the police showed up right when he shot them. This is when the old guy calms down a bit, or at least isn't trying to shoot anyone anymore. So there's a lot of police trying to get the gun from him, and people start to get up and hide. This is when we go behind the pillar. It takes a few minutes, but finally he lets go of the gun. Probably sat at his daughter and grandchild's death, and the police take him finally. 
I think it took the police some time to show up because at the time, it was a very small airport. Low on crimes and such. My grandma said the whole thing happened in maybe 20 minutes, but to me, it felt like ages. As I only talked to my grandma recently, I hadn't realized how close we had been to the old man and his daughter, and that when I saw red just a few inches from my nose, I probably saw someone who had been hurt, so close to me and was putting myself in danger trying to push her off. I'm forever grateful that she protected me so well and that I hadn't realized the situation we were in until recently. I came over from Serbia at age 13 with my mother. My older brother who was 15 years older than me had lived in America for a few years and he sent for us. My mom wouldn't be staying although at the time I wasn't aware of that. Anyway, we landed in New York City and the plan was my brother would come get us. However, my niece decided to come early and my brother's wife went into labor shortly before we landed. My brother couldn't leave his wife so he asked a coworker of his. They drove cabs to pick us up in New York City and drive us to New Jersey where he and my sister-in-law lived. When we got to New York City, we waited in customs for what seemed like forever. We looked for my brother's friend but didn't see him. This was the early 90s and cell phones weren't as commonplace and even if they were, my mom and I didn't have one. Suddenly, we heard our names being called and I saw a tall man. He introduced himself in perfect Serbian and explained he was a good friend of my brother's and told us about the baby. He said he'd be driving us the two hours from the airport to my brother's home. My mom relaxed and they happily began to converse about the baby and my brother in America. I however just felt off. This guy gave me bad vibes and regardless of my brother's friendship with him, I felt distrustful of him. We drove for a good hour and a half when he announced he was going to take us to breakfast. We hadn't eaten in over 15 hours so we were starving by then. We pulled up to a house and my mom and I were confused. He insisted cheerfully that his wife was cooking us breakfast and after that we drive the rest of the way to the hospital to see my family. My mom shushed me when I whispered something didn't feel right and told me that we needed to be grateful for the hospitality. We were led up into the house. It was dark and dank and dirty. Suddenly, I think my mom finally got a bit nervous and started insisting he take us to my brother. Suddenly, the guy grabbed my mom by the wrist and he told her that he needed a wife to take care of him in his house. And when he heard my brother tell the others at work she'd be coming to stay, he knew he'd found a wife. I at the time was a scrawny little scamp of a kid and I tried pushing him off of my mom but he hit me so hard that I saw stars. At this point we were obviously terrified. Neither of us spoke English and we only knew my brother's home number and he was at the hospital. Also, in Serbia you don't dial 911 so even if I could I didn't know that's how I'd call the police. Anyways, he tells my mom she's to clean and to cook for him and he takes me to the basement where I was locked in what I now know is called the laundry room. I banged and cried and yelled, but it was so far down in the basement everything was muffled. For a week, we were kept in his home. He'd lock us up in the basement after my mom cooked him breakfast and he'd let us out when he'd come back home at 4. If we had to use the restroom, there was a bathroom, but that was it. Just a bathroom and a laundry room. It was freezing cold down there, and even us huddling together under a blanket did nothing. One morning, I discovered a small window by climbing on some boxes. I managed to open it, and my mother insisted I squeeze through it. I didn't want to leave her, and besides, how would I get help? I couldn't read nor speak the language. However, I didn't want to live like this for the rest of my life, so I did as she asked. I ran once I got out, and I'm sure I was a sight. A scrawny boy with no shoes, only wearing shorts and a t-shirt in the middle of November. However, that is what saved us as several concerned neighbors tried to get me to come to them, and I wouldn't. I was terrified. I kept trying to get them to follow me. The police were called, and a very nice policeman tried to get me to go into his car. Then I saw the man who'd taken us drive up in his taxi. He saw the police and took off. That's when I made a run for his house to get my mom. Needless to say, the cop and his partner ran after me and my mother was rescued. It took another four hours for them to find someone who spoke our language for us to tell them what happened. A warrant was issued for the man. My brother was contacted and his friend had told him we had never showed and my brother had been frantically calling back home in Serbia to find us. He drove up to get us and to give the cops information on his supposed friend so they could find him. But they never did find him. 
Back then before 9-11, it was easy for someone to disappear. However, it made me distrustful for a long time of people and their intentions. My mom grew homesick and she ended up going back to Serbia. I stayed and finished school and I ended up becoming a cop in the military thanks to the nice officer that helped me all those years ago. I think of that guy who kept us prisoner every now and then and honestly, I wouldn't mind meeting him now. I just don't think he'd want to meet me.